This month we're going to take a look at the Innovative Designer as one of the ISTE standards. So when we think about this, we got to go back to the, those standards and remember to look at the performance indicators that exist here. And when we think about what an Innovative Designer is, we're really talking about an identity that a student would take on upon graduation. And so we need to provide lots of opportunities for these students throughout their educational process to be able to learn this. And so when you look at some of the standards, you'll see that they have to um, have a deliberate design process and create innovative artifacts. And that they have to think about um, using digital tools, but calculated risks and building prototypes and a cyclical design process. And so when I, when I think about this, although the word digital does appear in here, I don't know that this really involves a lot of those digital tools that we've talked about in previous months. So let's think about this for a moment. You know, if you're not familiar with um, sites like um, the DIY sites, so this is Kickstarter, and there are lots of products that people are building. We're in a do-it-yourself culture. Um, Indiegogo is another one that does something similar where um, people are, are designing and, and trying to crowdsource their own products in order to sell. And so let's look at the, the next generation science standards. And what we'll notice is here's one on engineering design, and this is for middle school. But if I go back to elementary school in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and so on, what we see is there's engineering design. And what does that really look like? What are we talking about in those cases? Well, for the NGSS, they're defining it in, in sort of this little pattern here where we say define and then optimize and develop solutions you'll notice there's arrows going back and forth and back and forth between them so there's a lot of thought and, and discussion I think that that really should be centered around um, des the design process so when I think about the design process you can google this and you can find all kinds of websites that will have it um, and and generally this type of process is a cyclical process that you see something like this, and we could talk about tools where we are, are thinking about like collecting information, and we talked about that last month with the knowledge constructor, and brainstorming activities and so types of software that you could use for that, things like Padlet or Lucidchart, and then giving feedback uh, through like commenting tools, um, and but there's this iterative design process that is a part of it. And so when we talk about teaching the engineering design process, we have to think about it being cyclical. And so um, asking and questions as a, as a place to start and then researching, like this gives us the cyclical piece that we can think about. And I would just point out like the one that says test and evaluate prototype, build a prototype, like the idea of building something, testing a little bit, then tinkering with it and changing it just a bit. And so we really want to focus in on that, but when we do that, I would just point out there are so many different design models that we can think about. Like, and, and so this is one in particular I like from uh, Design Thinking 101, and we think about like empathize. Like we have to understand what the problems may be for folks, and then we w might go through like the stage where we're understanding, exploring, and then, and then really keep bringing something to fruition, but we're always jumping back, especially from that prototype, where we can go backwards and then forwards as we go through this design process. And so we think about other types of design processes, like here's, this is another one that I, I really like, where we talk about inspiration, ideation, and implementation. And there are all these different um, points to it and I really like the swirls that take us back and forth as we think about like the point of view or ideate as a as a real word that we want to consider or storytelling is really another one of those types of things and so um, students can take their th their thoughts and they could use a website like uh, storyboard that to really explain the process that they're going through and, and that's really what we're talking about. And if you're looking for a simpler one for your, for your students, here's one where um, we go through like a discovery process, we, we research, and we do some interpretation, ideation, experimentation, and evolution. And so, so we focused a lot so far on the design process, 
But now we'll talk about this community, some skills that are associated with it. And what are the skills that students really need to engage in, in order to be able to, to, to go through the design process. And so part of this is being able to communicate and to be able to talk to one another and present their, their solutions. It has to do with modeling and being able to design their own um, drawings and programs and things like that. Scaling and measuring is another one. So think about students, like, can they, they take something and scale it down or scale it up so that it will, will match those types of things. And remember, we're talking about the skills that students will need. Being able to be maybe CAD competent, uh, you know, Tinkercad is a great program that's free and a good starter for students that may want to start uh, investigating their own designs or doing uh, things like 3D printing. And then don't forget about the journaling phase. And we've talked about this before of getting students to really record their information that they're doing, drawing out pictures, making a record of all the work that they do so that they can go back and really truly reflect on that design process. And so these journals are about several things like reflecting upon the work that we're doing and then altering the work that we see happening and then finally recycling that work, going back through and, and going through that, again, iterative process. And when students do this, they're going to make their, vis their thinking visible, that we'll be able to see what it was that they were doing as they go through the design process. And then in the final steps, we would think about the marketing and the entrepreneurism that can occur here. So creating a marketing plan. So we have a Connects Design Challenge where students have to uh, create a budget for each of the parts that they use, and that becomes part of the work that they're doing. And then that entrepreneurial skill of being able to develop things that people need and understanding the skills that go involved with that is a huge part of it. And so I'll, I'll leave you with this, that when we talk about design problems, um, and we did this with a 3D printer workshop, but I think it fits lots of things that we try and think about fixing something that's broken, improving something that exists, or what probably is the toughest, creating something that doesn't even exist at this point. And so these are three types of problems that you can give to students as they learn to design along the way. So hopefully when we go back and we think about um, our next month and where we'll be going, the identity that, that students have in the innovative designer piece is something that they have also to develop as they do computational thinker, creative communicator, and global collaborator.